Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Leanne, if you don't know me. Today I'm gonna to be talking about all of my favorite things. My recent favorites, my current favorites, everything I've been loving lately. Makeup, skincare, body care, tan favorites. I also have unfavorites. I haven't done any unfavorites, unfavorites, in a while, a very long time, and I used to always do favorites and unfavorites, and I don't know what happened to me. I guess I stopped hating things, that's not true. But I've got a couple of unfavorites to throw in there, and then also, of course, I've got podcasts. I have five podcasts to talk about. I haven't done a favorites video in a few months, so you know, I listen to podcasts at a pace that is probably abnormal, probably something I should be concerned about, but whatever. I've got a bunch of favorites. So if you like true crime podcasts, I will talk about that at the end of the video. At least a few of you guys enjoy my Spotify playlist and I appreciate that. So I will also have a link to a new Spotify playlist that I made of what I've been listening to lately, a few songs that I like um, in the description. Also, before this intro gets insanely long, um, I'm really sick or I thought I was getting better. Yesterday I thought I was getting better, so I put filming off until today. Whatever, not better, actually a lot worse. But since I'm stuck home, I'm broken inside and I cannot stop doing things. I can't just like sit in bed. I'm sorry, that's very boring. So sorry you have to deal with me with my sick voice and hopefully my nose doesn't start running or my eyes why are my eyes running i was telling grant i was like my eyes are watering so much he's like are you sure you're just not crying and i'm like you know at this point i'm not sure if i'm not crying so i took some sudafed i've taken some tylenol we're here, we're doing it. I'm sorry I just sniffed like that. I've got a bunch of stuff to talk to you about and it's all very worthwhile stuff. I definitely don't throw around the word favorite very lightly. Like if I tell you it's a favorite, I am recommending it. I know that it's worked for me and I would put my money on it working for you too. So that just got serious. Let's talk about a favorite. First favorite I wanna talk about, I feel like this one is kind of like universal. Everyone loves a really, really good highlight and Milk Makeup just came out with their new Flex Highlighters and this one is in the color Lit. They actually sent me this highlight with all of their new stick foundations, which I still have not tried. I've been meaning to try. I wanted to try them this weekend. I'm not sure. Do you guys want to see a video about that? I asked you on Instagram. Mostly people said no. They wanted to see a favorites video. That's why we're doing this. This color is just absolutely gorgeous. Ever since I got it, I've been wearing it pretty much every single day. I can't get enough of it. You get such an amazing color payoff. It's almost like metallic. Just at first swipe, it's metallic. I don't really go crazy with it, and you definitely don't have to go crazy with it, but you could. You really, really could. It comes in four different shades. This is definitely my favorite. I feel like it works for me. Tan, not tan, whatever makeup, anytime. I'm just really, really loving this one, and I definitely think it's worth a try. Okay, next up, brow product. I feel like this one is also a universal. Everyone loves brows. Brows have been the thing for I don't know how many years at this point. I've shared all of my struggles with my fluffy, weird brows for so many years. <laughs> And I've never really found a gel or any kind of brow product that really gives that stick. It really gives that volume, that stand up quality that I feel like is really in right now. It's kind of like that fluffy model brow. I did a whole video trying a bunch of different like DIY kind of strange experiments with my brows. It was interesting in case you saw that one. I can link it down below too. I found this pretty recently. You saw it in my last video and I was really only using this for about a week before the video came out. So at this point, it's only been like two or three weeks since I've had this product, but I feel like I've talked about it so much lately. You might already be sick of hearing about it, but in case, you need a new brow product and you like drugstore makeup, I am here for you. This is the new CoverGirl Easy Breezy Brow. I have it in medium and I have it in light. In last week's video, I only had medium and I felt like it was a little dark on me, so I was really curious about the lighter color and they really only have a light, medium, dark, and a clear. But I cannot get over how good this product is. I've tried so many different brow gels and like, Hello, drugstore came through for me yet again. I'm so happy. It gives you a lot of color payoff. It gives you a lot of volume. My brows stand up and they are like, I mean, you can feel product in your brow, but I mean, hello, if it's anything that's gonna actually like gel your brows up or in place, you're gonna feel it on your brow. But this does better for me than soap brows. And obviously it's less steps and it's easier. I don't know, I'm just in love with this. I'm so excited that I found it. I feel like I have like put it out into the universe or at least the universe got very wary of me whining about my sad fluffy brows that I could not deal with. And this product was sent to me from the heavens and I'm so grateful and so in love with it. I feel like a lot of you guys have already commented and 
and like I'm getting that brow product because I raved about it in my last video, but like I'm raving again, okay? Maybe I'll stop soon, but I just wanna get the word out. This is very good in case you're looking for one. The shade selection is lacking, but if you can make it work, is totally worth it. Next up, I have a lip product. This is the NARS Lip Satin, what? Satin Lip Pencil in Rikujian. I feel bad that I can't pronounce that, but this is such a beautiful lip product. It was suggested to me by so many of you guys after I did my Revlon Balm Stain dupe video. So many people said this was a great dupe, so I bought it. And thank you so much for bringing this into my life. I appreciate you guys so much, but I do have to say, I just have to say it, it's not a dupe. You guys have the greatest tips. I always appreciate it, but I did a side-by-side -side comparison and it's just a different color, but that does not mean this is a bad lip pencil. I don't wanna take it back or anything. This is just a gorgeous color. It's easy to apply. It is very pigmented. It's not so much like a balm, but it's really, really pretty. I'm actually not wearing it on my lips right now, which was, a mistake. I'm gonna put it on for you just so you can see. Um, it has a little bit more of like a reddish tone compared to the balm stain for me, but it's pretty close. I'm not gonna say it's not close because it's close. It doesn't feel heavy on the lips even though it is so pigmented. It's got a really nice shine. I do feel like it dries down a little bit more, but this is pretty right. This is a really nice everyday color that can kind of like go with any look in my opinion. So thank you for bringing that into my life. It's not a dupe but that's okay. Okay, next up I have a blush favorite. I feel like we're all getting way more into blush. I mean, I never stopped being into blush. I feel like there was a time when like on Instagram and stuff, you just like would not see people wearing blush and they'd like list out their makeup and they just wouldn't have blush. They'd have like contour and bronzer and like no blush. And I was like, how are you living? I've told you these things before. I am about blush, but it feels like we are collectively just getting so much more into blush to the point where I kind of feel like we're on the cusp of like 80s blush, which I'm not against. Like the whole 30 year cycle, like it makes sense. I feel like we're going hardcore into blush. I'm so into it. I'm getting more and more into it. I feel like the camera really kind of washes it out on me. I'm not sure if you can see my blush fully. Let me get to the favorite. This is my newest blush favorite. It's a cream blush. It's from Besame Cosmetics and it's an apricot. It's the cream rouge. All of their products are like vintage makeup inspired and it's really interesting. It's a brand that's always interested me, but for whatever reason, I never made an order. Finally did, do not regret. It comes in this really beautiful metal packaging. Oh, hello, come open. <laughs> and it's this bright, almost like orangey red color. I've been using it like every day since I got it. It is so beautiful. It's like fiery coral. Is that the right way to say that? I don't know, but I love it. If you're looking for a cream blush and you like a loud color, you like a lot of blush, this is the one. I really, really like it. I feel like it has great staying power. It's really easy to blend. It doesn't seem to make me more oily. I've just been loving it. And I mean, you can't say that's not adorable, right? Okay, next up for skincare, really quickly, this is the La Roche-Posay Effeclair. You can read it. It's a medicated gel cleanser. It targets excess oil and helps clear acne breakouts with 2% salicylic acid and I've been liking it. I feel like I've been noticing a lot more clogged pores and blackheads and I've been kind of switching up my skincare a little bit. I mean, I still love all of the skincare products that I put in my recent skincare video, but since I've been trying to stay away from my Epiduo spot treatment and my Retin-A lately, it's just, I mean, I need help in other ways. And I feel like this is a safe alternative and I feel like I've been noticing improvement, which makes me very happy. I just got it at Walgreens. It's definitely a little bit more expensive for the drugstore, but I like that it's really accessible. I've tried other La Roche-Posay products in the past. Uh, I think the cleanser that I showed you guys in that video was just like their gentle hydrating cleanser. I really like that. And so I've been switching off between this one and that one lately. And I feel like I'm noticing a difference, which is really great because I was very frustrated. Next up, I have the Bondi Sands Self Tan Eraser. And I love this. This is gonna carry me into my unfavorites. Just wait a second for that. And then we'll go back to favorites for the podcast. You guys know about the whole self tanning routine. It is extensive. It is probably the most calculated routine I have in my life period. I've been working on it for years. Somehow I had never tried a self tan remover. Honestly, I just kind of thought that's never gonna work. Like that's not a thing. Like, why are you selling that? It's not real. And I discounted them, but I saw this one in Ulta and I just bought this one because this is the same brand as one of my favorite 
self tanners. It does not work. Wow, I suddenly switched to this one. So this is an unfavorite. This one is horrible. It's a nightmare. You put it all over your skin, wait five minutes, and then get in the shower and it's supposed to just wash off like magically. No, it actually made the job harder than it usually is. Like I just use regular like scrubby gloves. It made me streaky. It like made it come off really well in some areas, but it's a foam. Like I got it everywhere. It wasn't that I applied it streaky. It just it worked in some patches and really didn't work in most other patches. So I hated this. I've only used it once, honestly, but that was kind of enough for me. But then after I talked about this on my Instagram story, Taylor DM'd me and she said, I mean, if you don't watch her channel, you should be watching her channel, just do it. She DM'd me and told me this is the one that I should be trying. It's the Bondi Sands Self Tan Eraser. This is the favorite. This is the unfavorite. They look very similar. This one actually works. So you leave this one on for 10 minutes. I don't love the smell. The smell honestly kind of worries me a little bit, but I don't even care. It works so well. It was such a breath of fresh air not to have to like really go in and scrub with my scrubby gloves every single part of my body. Like I did go over my whole body with my scrubby gloves just to be sure, but it made the job so much easier. And I don't know why it's taking me so long to try this. It's crazy because I've been self tanning for so long. So I know this product does not apply to probably most of you, but in case you're into self tanning, this one is good. And you can also get it at Walgreens, which is really nice. So thank you to Taylor for letting me know what's up. Okay, so since we kind of just messily slid into the unfavorite section, this is my only other unfavorite. This is the L'Oreal Blush Please Shimmering Blush in Saint Tropez. Oh, how strange. Hmm, what's up with that? So this blush was actually sent to me and I wanted to like it. I feel like this is a really pretty color. This is a color that I like. And as I've said already, I've been very into blush. And I was like, a new blush, yeah! I'm like putting it everywhere. I regretted that. It has like a very noticeable sheen of glitter, like not a sheen, it's got glitter. And it kind of appeared that it was just kind of like an overspray. It's just on the top layer. And once you got past that, you'd be good. And even where it's rubbed in the middle, it kind of looks like you can't see the glitter in the middle. But no, the glitter in the middle just goes into stealth mode and you're still loading your brush up with glitter, applying it all over your face and you're just, glittery. It's like time traveling back to the fourth grade and you're covered in glitter and it's not a good thing or it's at least not a good thing for me. Why would you do this? I don't get it. So just in case you thought this packaging was pretty because I definitely did, just just steer clear unless you're really into like chunky, very noticeable glitter. Like Grant even said something when I wore this blush for the first time. He's like, oh, you're really glittery today. <laughs> Wow, that's not exactly what I wanted to hear. It's absolutely true, but you know, thanks for noticing. Okay, I just had to have a little moment with a cough drop. I'm back. It seems darker in here. Oh well, do we really need to have good lighting to talk about podcasts? I don't think so. First one I wanna talk about is the clearing. Basically, this is about Ed Edwards, but more so it's about his daughter, April. I don't wanna give any spoilers, so I'm just gonna give like a very, very surface level overview of what it's about. She actually made the call and put in the tip that got him arrested years and years and years after, you know, a string of killings over many years. So this is all about her life, what it was like growing up with him as a dad, different murders that she thinks that he might have been a part of, um, and they even go into the conspiracy stuff about him. Because over time, people have kind of built Ed Edwards up as like this like serial killer of all serial killers. Like he did everything from like John JonBenet Ramsey to like the Zodiac, like he's done it all. Some people just believe like he, he did it all. And so she talks about that. They go and like talk to those people. It feels like I just gave you a lot of information about it, but I did not spoil anything. There is so much there. It is so interesting. And I also really love April's voice. I know that has nothing to do with what the podcast is about, but I don't know. I feel like I like her because I like her voice. I have no idea what she looks like or anything. Not that that matters. Anyway, moving on to the next podcast. The next one is Confronting OJ. And this one is very interesting to me. I never really get sick of hearing more and more about OJ, the OJ trial, that whole situation. Like maybe most people, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about it, but I definitely feel like he did it. He kind of got away with it in a way. But I mean, did he really, if everyone is just sitting around thinking that he did it? 
I don't know. That's another conversation. But this podcast is very interesting. It's actually hosted by Kim Goldman, who is Ron's sister. Ron was actually murdered with Nicole Brown Simpson. And I feel like a lot of times everything is really focused on like, OJ and Nicole, OJ and Nicole, all of that, and not as much Ron. And so this brings like a whole other perspective and it talks about like, you know, everything that she went through at the time. And then beyond that, she goes and she like interviews the people that were actually involved with the trial, even including jury members. Like I was so interested and it came out a while ago. It came out in like June, but there are still new episodes. It feels like it's over and they're just adding bonus episodes. I was really little when the whole OJ car chase trial, all of that happened, but I feel like I remember it. Like it was such a big thing that happened in the nineties. And I mean, it's something that still definitely really interests me. And I think it interests a lot of people. So if you're still into the whole OJ thing, that's a good one. Okay, next up is Helen Gone season two. Okay, so you guys know I've talked about Helen Gone season one and I was so into it. I love the way they did that podcast. Everything about it was so interesting. I felt like they were really making progress on the case in season one. And I was honestly so disappointed whenever I found out or figured out as I was listening that they were not gonna be going back like fully to the case that they were doing in season one. Like where it left off on season one, I was like, we're almost there. But like, I guess we weren't. <laughs> it just seemed like we were really close. I don't, I'm very emotionally invested, obviously. I mean, there are updates about the Rebecca Gould case from season one in season two, but that's like not what it's about. But while I am kind of disappointed about her moving on from that, the new season and the new case that she's covering is just as good. It's about Janie Ward and it happened in the 80s. She was like 16 years old and she died and was very mysterious. It's in a small town in Arkansas and there's just like a lot of conflicting stories and so many people in the town, especially her family, feel like that there was foul play. There was kind of like a cover up by the police and she's just digging in. And I mean, I don't know what's gonna happen but I kind of feel like she's not gonna resolve the case. I don't know how far this one is gonna get. And maybe I just feel like that because of the way season one was, but I don't know. It's still really, really interesting regardless of all that. The next one is Man in the Window. I feel like if you're into true crime podcasts, you've probably already listened to this one, but in case you haven't, it's definitely a good one to listen to. It's all about the Golden State Killer, which has been a really, really big story, especially since last year they actually caught the guy. He was one of the really big serial killers through the 70s and 80s, which it just seemed like that was a thing back then. And it's just, I don't, this is weird to say, but it's so nice to have like a ending to the story. Like sometimes whenever I hear those stories about those like really old serial killers, like it almost kind of doesn't interest me because I want to know that they can get caught. I want to hear the ending of the story and I want to hear like an analysis of like, why did he do it? You know, I want to hear from the people that knew him growing up. I want to hear about his family history. I want to like, I don't know, you can never know why somebody did it, but to hear stories about his life. I don't know, you can kind of try to make sense of it even though you can't, you know what I mean? This was a very good podcast because I feel like it went in really deep and there's probably been millions of podcasts about the Golden State Killer over the years, but I feel like this one is really good. It goes over so much of his history and how the case was, I don't know, kind of like messed up back in the day. Just go listen to it. <laughs> I'm not gonna like tell you everything. It's just very good. And I feel like it's a very well-rounded look at everything. All right, and the last podcast I wanna tell you about is really new. It's only been out for like three or four weeks. I think four weeks by the time this comes out. And I, just kind of had to re-record this little segment because I started to actually talk about it, but I wanna not tell you the details because with the way that the podcast starts, if you don't know about it already, it's kind of a mystery at the beginning. Um, it focuses more on the fact that there's a book out there that I think it came out in, in the 80s and it's called Hitman, a technical manual for independent contractors. And it basically just tells you how to be a hitman. like how to go about murdering someone. Am I gonna be able to say that? Am I gonna get demonetized for telling you about podcasts? I really hope not. But 
it is very good. I mean, can you believe there's a book out there like that? Of course, after they talk about the book, it leads to an actual case where this book was involved. It's crazy. And whenever I'm listening to a podcast about a case or something that I've never heard of before, I really like to just listen to the podcast and I don't look up stuff about it on the internet because I don't want to like spoil it for myself. I don't know. It's kind of a frustrating way to go about things, but I really like the storytelling. I like, you know, seeing where they go with it. And like, obviously with this podcast, you know, they started in with the book and then they led into like the lives of these people and then what happened and then how it all broke loose. And sometimes you kind of know where it's going, but sometimes you don't. And I really like, you know, going through that whole ride. I don't know how good it's gonna be in the end, but I've been enjoying it so far. Okay, I feel like I've been talking about podcasts for a really long time. Hopefully you're interested in podcasts because I think I just talked about podcasts longer than I talked about makeup and products. Oh well, <laughs> that's everything for today. I am feeling absolutely terrible, so I'm gonna go hide in a cold, dark room and try to get better. I'm sure I'll be all better by the time this video comes out. I really appreciate you guys watching. I'll leave links to everything in the description down below in case you're curious. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell for notifications. You can also find me on social media everywhere. I really appreciate you guys being here and I'll see you guys next time. Bye everyone. But either way, whoa, <laughs> applying glitter all over to your face. Oh, I cannot talk right now. Oh, Grant, I'm dying. <sighs> I feel like I'm kind of ruining this. Am I? Question mark? Uh.